When Princess Diana's baby boy fell in love with a gorgeous American starlet, we all went, ah. Oh. Then things got even better. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle were married and in doing so took on the role of Duke and Duchess of the world. Are you serious? But now something has happened. The couple appear to want a little privacy. Too much to ask? You bet. The public feel cheated, the tabloids have turned, and the blame game, much of it directed at Meghan, is fierce. OK, I'm listening. You have my attention. It hasn't yet progressed to off with her head, but it's still a major headache for the royal family. Nice. It started so well. A dashing prince with the love of his life. The announcement of an engagement. It's beautiful, and he designed it. It's incredible. And oh my God! Plans for a wedding. Sure, there were a few hiccups. She's not gonna tell me that I can't speak. In-laws acting like outlaws. If I had a message for Harry, it's get over it. Uh, that doesn't make sense. I'm your new father-in-law. But as Meghan Markle walked down the aisle to be with Prince Harry... OK. ..the whole world was happy. Fast forward 15 months... What is he doing? ..the fairy tale has fractured. And one person is copying all the blame. Andrew, what on earth has Megan done? <laughs> hey, y'all, come look at this. Well, Megan seems to be a version of the Antichrist as far as Fleet Street are concerned. And it's almost a royal rite of passage you've got to go through. Andrew. Are you serious? Morton has spent a lifetime making the private lives of the royal family public. But he reckons Meghan Markle bashing has gone too far. You don't know what's going on, really. And, and yet the, the, the kind of casual vituperation of, of Meghan and Harry is, you know, is, it makes you shudder. I mean, it's not like she's done anything wrong. She's just basically living her life as a royal. She's... In, in my view, she... Wait for it. ...has done everything right. It's quite revealing that Meghan said when she joined the royal family that she was going to hit the ground running. Unlike Morton, former Palace insider Patrick Jefferson said... <laughs> ...as Meghan needs work to make it as a royal. Now, of course, we love people who hit the ground running. Energy, enthusiasm, motivation, let's do it but you've got to know where you're running to and who's running with you. And what are you going to say when you get there? At what should be the happiest time of the newlyweds' lives, things have gone famously awry for Meghan, and in turn, Harry too. Are you serious? Eyebrows were first raised when taxpayers funded their $4 million house reno. The Duke and Duchess have been criticised for demanding privacy, yet still accepting taxpayers' money for renovations on their home. Oh my God! More tut-tutting when the couple kept little Archie away from public view. I mean, they could have come out in a glass carriage just to show us the baby in the christening gown. Then Meghan was slammed for acting like a snob at the tennis. This is not a private visit. If you're the Duchess of Sussex getting a freebie at Wimbledon in the VIP seat, it's not a private visit. And now, a further frenzy of outrage because the... Here it comes. These eco-warriors like to travel in style. A lot of people have labelled them hypocrites because they've taken four private jet flights uh, in just 11 days. Andrew Morton says... Are you serious? It's just not worth the hot air. It seems to me that Meghan really should be given applause, not uh, uh, and bouquets, rather than the attacks that she and Harry are suffering from. I don't think they're listening to you. Though. Stop it. 
Who's they? Well, the press. Has she really provoked the British media so badly? The British media are notoriously fickle. They have an antenna. Are you serious? For when the royal family is not being entirely straight with them. And this may be why Meghan and other members of the family have taken far more control of their own image. I mean, look at all these tourists here. A lot of people, and it's a sunny day. Yeah, well, you know who they've come to see, Harry and Meg's. Almost there. They've not come to see Harry and Meg's. They've come to see the Queen. They've come to pay respect to the great British tradition of the monarchy. Mm. They've come to see real royals. Outside the gates of the world's most famous family home, Today, there's only one winner in a popularity poll about young royal wives. Kate <laughs> is a billion times better. A billion times yeah. better. Meghan does not hold a candle to Kate. I'm here with British commentator Katie Hopkins. Megan's Brilliant. interesting. No, she's fickle, she's of the moment, she's this deep. Who's Are you serious? Says someone has to speak for the commoners and expose the real Meghan Markle. Katie, why do you hate Meghan so much? Uh, what has she ever done to you? Oh, uh, everything. It's my royal family. This is my country. Fact. Prince Harry is my Prince Harry. So you're jealous? I, I'm not jealous of Meghan. Who wants to be Meghan Markle? Like, I'm unpopular. Mm. I'm known as the biggest bitch in Britain. Mm. The only person in Britain who's more unpopular than me, Meghan Markle. I, I don't think that's right. I think that's true. Katie is nothing if not outspoken, but she genuinely believes the future of the royal family is at stake unless Meghan Markle is banished for <gasps> forthwith. Meghan Markle is the biggest hypocrite there is. What does Meghan Markle do? Oh, we've got to save the planet, save the planet. Oh, do one good thing every day. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Then what does she she do get on four private flights to wherever land at £400,000 a week higher and then uses up half the CO2 emissions that anyone else might have had. It's pure hypocrisy. And what is she really? She's a no one. Uh, that doesn't make sense. She's a divorcee. When did we want a divorcee in the royal family? She wears bad clothes. When did we ask for that? We've just got so much better of our own. You know, Strong words, really maybe some embellishment, some. but here in Britain, it's backed up by Meghan's disapproval ratings. OK. A recent survey found the Duchess divisive and ranked her the second most disliked female royal after Camilla. There were old, knackered old sceptics like me, old, haggard women going, oh, that doesn't look very good. <laughs> and then sort of the young, beautiful people going, oh, we love her social media, oh, fabulous, fabulous Beyonce. That's the split. And the haggard ones have got even more entrenched in their hatred. And I think even the young ones are sceptical because Prince Harry's lost all of his no, va va voom what irks Katie is the damage she thinks Meghan is causing to Harry's reputation. Fact. Maybe Harry doesn't give a stuff what anyone thinks. He's just chosen someone for himself and maybe he's sick of the media and maybe he doesn't like people like you having a running commentary mm. on his life. It is his life. Sort of, but then again, I just paid £2.3 million as, <gasps> as a taxpayer in order to redevelop Frogmere Cottage for him and his wife. I just paid for his wife to sit in the royal box at Wimbledon. That went well. I just, yeah, that was splendid. She wouldn't let anyone take a photograph of herself and ask to be sat alone. So, <laughs> give and take, go leave the royal family, abdicate, whoop, whoop, off you go. My concern about Meghan is that she's allowing her PR to be driven from America. So she's, so it's her American friends, her American uh, court, as you will, Oprah, George Clooney, Amal Clooney, Serena Williams, all standing up for her, which is good, but it's, it's, it, it's from the perspective of America as opposed to the perspective of Britain. Andrew Moore. 
stop it. And famously wrote a bestseller about Harry's mum, Princess Diana. And in Meghan Markle, he sees history repeating itself. I remember... Wait for it. Princess Diana, she was called the fairy tale princess when she first married Prince Charles. Within a year, she's been called a fiend and a monster because, her, because a lot of uh, members of staff, bodyguards, valet, private secretaries had left. Okay. Fergie, that's, uh, Duchess of York, starts off as a breath of fresh air, great friend of the Queen, goes carriage driving, um, goes uh, horse riding with the Queen and Prince Philip. Are you serious? And then within a matter of months, she's dubbed Freebie Fergie because she asked for a discount on a kitchen. So, you know, it's, this is what's happened. Oh my God! As colorful as the British royal family's always been, their whiteness has dominated. And that brings us to a sensitive subject. I think that's where people go with this. If, if I criticise Meghan as well, okay. you can hear I am, people say, well, you're racist. And honestly, it's not even a second thought to me. It only, only comes up in the minds of those who are truly racist, and that's never people like me. I'm just observing the dress is better on Kate, how she wears it is better. So this racist thing is really old and tired, but I think it's just people's way of sort of saying, you must not criticise Meghan. Yeah, I, I just don't, I, I'm, I haven't from day one been into the fact of, you know, talking about private things that went on in the royal family when they were a part of it. And the thing is, it's just their point of view. We yeah. haven't had the other point of view. Mm. And it's like, don't, don't bring it to the public. Nobody wants to know about it. Every family has problems. Keep it to yourself. Yeah. Keep it to yourself. Yeah. And I just... I just think that from day one, they've handled it very badly. And you know what? They wanted their freedom. They have it. But they want more than just their freedom. They want to be two very important people politically. Yeah, but they want the world. OK. And, Take it easy. Um, but I think if they keep poking their nose into American and uh, political affairs and the Constitution and so on, it's not going to end well. I can tell them that. Oh, um, I want to talk to you also about... It's Dave like he's, he's only... He's, I was just going to say, he's only been here two minutes and he wants to run the country. It's like... Oh. Hold on. <laughs> it's completely absurd. Um, talking about Dave Chappelle. So Dave Chappelle, I don't know if you've been following this, but he... Did this big Netflix special? He told I some have. some trans jokes. You know, some people thought it was funny, including trans people. Other people, including other. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, come look at this. Trans people hated it. One of them cancelled. Netflix stood by him, but he was due to play in uh, a gig in Minneapolis yesterday, and they cancelled it. The organisers at the last minute and issued this mm -hmm. ridiculous, pompous statement. About, okay. about how, you know, they hadn't been aware that it wouldn't be a safe space for employees and so yeah. on. Uh, what do you make of it? It comes at a time when John Cleese actually has come out with an interesting comment about the threat to comedy at the moment from this cancel culture. Here's, here's what, <gasps> what John Cleese had to say. A lot of comedians now uh, are sitting there and when they think of something, they start thinking, oh, could I get away with that? I don't think so. So and so got into trouble when he said that. <laughs> that or she said that. You see what I mean? And that's the death of creativity. And I, I think he's... Look, I'm not a big fan of John Cleese, uh, to be honest, these days. He's a bit of a miserable old bore and he can't stand me, but that's, uh, that's neither here nor there. Oh, I, think I he, love him. I think Shush, he, I... Wait for it. Love him. Well, we'll agree to disagree about him. Uh, I'll probably get on fire with him, actually. If you're watching, John, come and do an interview. Um, but here's what... It's, it's sort of the statement that really made me puke. The Dave Chappelle show tonight at First Avenue has been cancelled. Uh, to staff, artists and our community, we hear you. <laughs> we are sorry. We know we must hold no. ourselves to the highest standards. We let you down. We're not just a blank box of people in it. We understand First Avenue is not just a room, but meaningful beyond our walls. The team and you have worked hard to make our venues the safest spaces in the country. Stop it. And we'll continue with that mission. We believe in diverse voices and the freedom of artistic art expression. But in honouring that, we lost sight of the impact this would have. I mean, what a load of old guff. Right? What, they really, what, they, what just, they really mean is... It's just... We are going to... 
decide what you're allowed to find funny. That's it. It's ridiculous. It's, again, a case of freedom of speech. This man is a brilliant writer, a brilliant comic, and when you watch him, he no! just doesn't tell silly jokes one after the mm. other to try and offend. It go always goes along with a story, and there's always the beginning, middle, and end, and it always comes around to, well, what do you think about it? This is what I think, and he... Wait for it. Does it? Uh, superbly. The point is, funny. he's not. He's Listen, not transphobic. If we, if we can't, he's not transphobic. No, but, he, no, but he thinks you should be able to tell. Not. You should be able to tell jokes about trans people, like we tell jokes about everybody. And actually, they're funny as jokes. Of course. Here it comes. And the thing is, the thing is, if there, um, if there are many trans people that don't that he offends, it's very, very simple. Don't watch. Yes. Turn it off. Go and watch something else. I just but but there are also millions of people that love him, that do want to watch him. I'm one of them. I think he's a genius. Oh, no question. But the thing is, it's like, it's simple. Why do people make such a big deal about, you know what he does, you know what he's famous for, don't watch it. Simple. I think, I think if we can't tell inappropriate jokes anymore, you and I are going to have to go and live on a desert island somewhere with Aussie. Oh, God, we might as well live in bloody Russia. <laughs> I mean, if... <laughs> if you can't laugh, <laughs> right? It's... You've got to laugh, you know. You've got to have irony. You've, you've got to laugh. With the, work, the state of the world right now, if you can't go out or watch something at home that's funny... What are we going to do? Do you know what I read the other day? Was that there's lots of WhatsApp groups now that everybody's on where inappropriate jokes are told because it's in secret. And I thought, how incredible, what a damning indictment of our society. In a way, it is a bit like Russia or North Korea okay. or China, where people feel they have to, they have to go is. underground to crack a joke in case yes. somebody's upset and, you, yeah. and you, you end up losing your job or your livelihood. Exactly. I mean, all the time people send me things and I'm like, where the hell? Wait for it. Hell, didn't you find that? <laughs> you know, and some of them are funny, some of them aren't, but it's like, who the hell is making all this stuff? But some of it is very funny. Sharon, fantastic. And, you know, it's, it's humour. Of course it's humour. Uh, Go on. Sharon, great to talk to you. Send Ozzy my best. Tell him I'm sorry he bottled it, but as soon as, he's, as, soon as he grows a pair... Get on this show and be uncensored for me. He owes me one, all right? He owes you big time, and I'm going to tell him he's got to... OK, I'm listening. You have my attention. Come on and do a river dance for you. Yes, he has. I look forward to seeing him <laughs> okay. uh, very soon. Sharon, great to talk to you. I'm right. so glad the old man's back Love on his feet. Fears. I know how worried you've been as a family. He is indomitable. He's indestructible. And oh, my God! Unfortunately, he he's not on he the is. show. <laughs> but we will see him <laughs> soon. Sharon, great to see you. All right. All the best. Loves you.